Hi, my name is Doreen and you're very welcome to my channel today. You know, life can be quite challenging for most people anyway. And that's why I think it's ever so important to find ways of going through your days as peacefully and as calm as possible. That way you can be as happy as possible at any given time, as much as possible anyway, in the midst of all the chaos that we have in our world, especially right now. There's so much happening and if you don't guard your thoughts properly, then you would find that you're constantly stressed. And that's when you start feeling, what's the purpose of life? Life has no meaning. That's when you get overwhelmed with all the chaos that might be around you. And so today I'm going to share with you 12 habits that I believe you should leave behind. And once you've done that, that you could find living life or living your days that bit more peaceful, okay? The first one is that I believe that you should stop consuming large amounts of news. Now, the news is a good thing. It's the first thing I do every day. Well, one of the first things I do every day anyway is to catch up with news because you want to know what's going on. You want to know how world events could be impacting your life. Especially, I believe that it's important to know what's happening around you to ensure your safety. All right, there's so much in the news that's relevant to all of us. And that's why I think that you should keep abreast with world events. Now, the problem is that you might do too much of it. And what that does is it leaves you quite stressed. You know, maybe what you should do is to time yourself. Do you need quarter of an hour of news or half an hour or an hour? Time yourself so that you consume the amount of the news that you need to keep abreast with events or ongoings in our world. I think that's key. But consuming too much of it, I believe that would probably translate into a lot of chaos in your mind. Well, of course, if you're someone who works with the news or something like that, and you need to keep listening to it, perhaps you're in some kind of communications role or something, then that's understandable. But if not, then I think that you should really um, get into the habit of limiting how much news that you take in. Because let's face it, especially now, there's a lot of bad news in our world, right? It's, it's most unfortunate, but such are the times that we're living in now. And yes, it's good to know about them so that wherever you can lend your support or prayers to, you know, those in suffering and all of that. And there's many people suffering right now, and it's so unfortunate. If you can help in any way, then of course, listening to the news would inform you about those world events and then guide you as to how you can lend a hand in those situations. But other than that, then I believe that you should limit the amount of news that you take in because especially if you're a very sensitive person who cannot easily digest some of the things that are on the news now, then it could leave you feeling very stressed indeed. And you don't need that level of stress in your life. So if at all possible, limit the amount of news that you take in, okay? I believe that it will do you much good. Now, let me just reiterate that it's a good thing to keep abreast with world events, but don't consume excessive amounts of news at any given time because I believe that that's what causes you the stress. I'm by no means saying that do not listen to news. Please do. I do. I think it's an important thing to do, but too much of it could really leave you feeling stressed and we don't want that to happen, do we? Now, number 12 is I think that you should stop spending time with the wrong people. Now, what do I mean by the wrong people? There are some people in your life that are toxic. Some people discourage you. Some people might be killing ideas that you come up with. There's a whole lot of things and a whole lot of impacts that various people in your life could be having on you. 
and I think that you need to carry out a very thorough review and see how people around you might be impacting you. Now, I'm not saying that stop speaking with some people you know or something like that, but I believe that it's important to take stock and have a critical look at how the people around you might be impacting you. And those people that are not impacting you positively, you might have to find a way of managing the relationship that you have with them. For example, why do you want to stay around someone who is toxic? Perhaps they bully you or don't make you feel good about yourself. They make you doubt yourself. You know, there's a fine line or there might be a fine line between this and people who constructively criticize you. There's some people who you go to when you want an honest opinion, okay? Myself, I don't really appreciate when, you know, someone just tells me good things all the time. They should be able to critique your actions and your activities sometimes. That way you know that they're genuine. But the way in which they do that is key and crucial, okay? There's a difference between just criticizing someone in an empty manner and leaving them feeling so broken and not even able to carry on with what they're doing and also crit criticizing them in a constructive way that lets them appreciate the fact that they could be approaching whatever they're doing in a much better way. Now, those are the people that you want in your life. Those people are gold dust because when you need the, the, the best of opinions, the most honest of opinions, things that other people might struggle to let you know, these are the kind of people you're going to. Now, those people, you want them in your life, but there are some people who just destroy your soul, you know, in one way or other. They do have their ways. You know, it could be always telling you something negative about yourself or downplaying your achievements. Perhaps they might be jealous of them. You might achieve things that they've not achieved themselves. And so to stop you from flying even higher, to stop you from soaring, from keeping those wings of yours spread wide open and soaring, they want to break those wings and, and, and weaken you by making you feel awful about yourself. Those people are toxic and you don't need them around, okay? And, and there's all sorts of tactics that they, they, they use to make you keep coming back to them in, in a very funny, strange way. I don't know how they do it, but there are people like that. And you need to take a very close look at your relationships if there's anyone like that in there and you want to put distance between you and these people. Now, there's also those who just discourage you. If you come up with a brilliant idea, it might be because they're not strong enough to follow through with such an idea themselves, or they're, they're, they're worried about the success you might achieve if you, if you went that route. It could be anything, but theirs is to discourage. Now, usually people like that are losers themselves and they want to keep you at the bottom with them. They don't want to see you soar. Okay, and so they will discourage you. And that's what they do. And they might have been doing that for years and because of that, you're not flying and you don't even realize it. All you know is that you constantly feel worried and you, you're you not sure why. You know, you start something and then you can't follow through with it. It might be just one word, one word that someone might be saying to you that might be just disheartening you so that you're not following through with your objectives. You need to have a, a very close look at the relationships that you have. And if there's anyone like that, you want to put distance between you and them, okay? There's also these people who just kill your idea, okay? You have a brilliant idea and then for some reason, they just see nothing good about it. And these people also, you want to put distance between you and them, all right? Or these are just examples I'm giving you, but there, there could be so many ways in which someone might be adversely impacting your life. It could be someone who gives you the wrong advice. Did you know that there's actually people who will give you wrong advice on purpose? There are, because if they give you the right advice, they're showing you the way, right? And they don't really want you to go ahead of them, or actually, do they want you to go ahead at all? 
you need to realize that not everyone in your life wishes you well, okay? It's the fact of life. They're good people and they're bad people, or not so good people. And not everyone wishes you well. Not everyone wants to see you thrive. And for that reason, they will secretly sabotage your, your efforts by giving you wrong advice. And so you need to be very careful who you're taking advice from. So again, you need to carry out a very thorough review of the people in your life and see if there's anyone in there who is, you know, um, um, you know, presenting themselves as a good friend who might indeed actually be hurting you and be hurting your progress. This is key. OK, so think about that. Spend some time to think about that. And you need to find a way of putting distance between yourself and people like this, okay? If it means that you don't need to see them anymore or hang out with them anymore, then so be it. Sometimes you have to be quite radical in the measures that you take to protect your inner peace. Your inner peace is everything and it's important to do whatever you need to do at any, t any point in time to safeguard it. But I believe the key is relationship management manage those relationships effectively so that they don't continue to impact you in an adverse manner, all right? So habit number 10 that I believe you should stop doing or drop is blaming others for your problems, okay? Blaming others for your problems. Now, a wise man once said that they might have been bo born poor, but they will not die poor. If you're born poor, that's not your fault, right? But if you die poor, that could just be your fault. Now, the, the, the theory behind this story is that you should not keep holding others accountable for the things that are going wrong in your life. Even if someone has done something that has been detrimental to you, you should be able to turn things around as much as possible. The one thing that you should not do is to just settle and do nothing to put things right in your life and just keep pointing fingers at someone else, saying that they're the reason for your problems. When you do that, you're not resolving the problem, are you? You're just sitting back, doing nothing, and just blaming someone else for your problems. That's the danger here. So it's very important that rather than blaming other people, that you get up and take action, take responsibility for the problems that you have in your life yourself and begin to resolve them. Yes, there are things that some people might do that could cause problems for any one of us. That, that's a fact, that's a given. I'm not saying that's not the case. What I'm saying is that there are times that we end up just um, using blame on others as an excuse for uh, not doing well, okay? You need to stop blaming someone else for you not progressing in your life. And the moment that you can do that, you will see that you will feel more at peace whatever someone has done that has adversely impacted your life, you need to be able to leave that behind as much as possible. You need to be able to let that go and carry on. Let me give you an example. It could be that somebody was involved in an accident and, and that accident was somebody else's fault. And through that accident, they lost a limb. Now, what do you think is the wiser thing to do? To sit back, keep crying every day and keep blaming someone else that they were involved in that accident or get some kind of prosthetic limb and then try to use that and then, you know, reform your life in some way. And there's many people who have done that. It's difficult, it's challenging, I know. But even in extreme cases like that, people are able to shake themselves off whatever happened and say, look, I am going to carry on in this new me, in this new way that I am. Now, I think that that's a much better better way of approaching a problem than just sitting back 
and blaming someone else all the time for the problem that you face. And there's so many people who are able to turn these mis misfortunes into great success stories. And that's how you should approach life, all right? Don't just sit back and do nothing and blame others for your situation. If you do that, then you're causing yourself all the stress and you're causing yourself all the problems. You need to be able to let go of whatever you think that others have done, stop blaming them and find a new way of moving forward, okay? Now, number nine, the next thing that I believe that you should quit doing so that you can enjoy a more peaceful life is to stop copying others. Stop copying others. You know, yes, by all means, learn from others. There, there, there's so much that can be learned from people who mentor and all of that. But just basically copying others all the time, what it does is that you disrespect yourself because what you're saying is, what you're saying to yourself is that you're not able yourself to come up with something original and what you're doing is you're killing your own creativity when you keep copying others all the time when you're in that mindset of just looking at what others are doing and copying that what you're doing is you're not giving yourself the chance or the opportunity to be creative and to be original that's what's really happening and because of that you are not discovering certain hidden great talents that you might have because you're so focused on copying other people. This is really, really important and you need to be able to reflect over this message that I'm giving you today. Who are you so focused on copying and why? You need to remember that this person also came up with their own idea and they're doing what they're doing in the way that they're doing it for you to admire them. So too, someone somewhere is waiting for you to just live your own life and to find your own self, find your own creative talent, find that thing that only you can do in just the way that only you are going to do it. And someone is waiting to, to admire that. Someone is waiting to enjoy that. But you're just not giving yourself the chance because all you're doing is you're copying other people. Okay? So it's very important that you stop disrespecting yourself so much by keeping copying other people and in so doing, killing your creativity. And this might be just one of the things that's causing you so much stress because you're not allowing yourself to find your own self and to be original in your ideas, you are not progressing. You are not reaching where you want to reach. You are not being able to realize the dream that you have in your mind. So stopping copying others might just be what you need to do to move on in your life, okay? Sit and reflect about this. And this message might be just what you needed to hear today to help you to unleash the creativity in you, that wonderful skill, that wonderful talent that you're not discovering. This might be what you need to do today. So reflect over this message. All right. Now let's look at number eight. So habit number eight is procrastinating. So when you procrastinate, what you do is you put off doing something that you need to do. Now, I think that we procrastinate because of something and it's that something that you need to find an address. Are you putting off doing something because you're scared? Are you nervous? Are you, are you feeling that you're not able to do that thing? And if so, why? Do you need to learn something new? Do you need someone to hold your hand and teach you how to approach something? Or are you lacking some kind of resource? What is it that's making you procrastinate? I think that's the key thing that you need to identify. And once you can identify what that thing is, that's letting you put off what you need to do. And if you can address it, then you can step up to the plate 
and execute your plan. And in so doing, you will find much satisfaction in the fact that you're realizing your goals. And I think that this is key to your inner peace. Long as you keep procrastinating, long as you keep putting off something that you need to do, then you're always going to feel unhappy because you feel as if there's something that you, sh you should be attaining and it's not happening. And the reason is you. The reason is that you're not taking action. And the question is why? And that's what you need to ask yourself today. You need to reflect on why you're putting off doing that thing that you so want to do. The will is there. Why are you not doing it? Now, that's what you need to sit, reflect and ask yourself and identify the culprit in this matter. Once you do, address it, okay? And do what it is that you need to do. Time waits for no man. So put that procrastination aside and do what you need to do, okay? And like I'm saying, the way of doing that is identifying what it is that's letting you procrastinate in the first place, address it, and tackle that goal, okay? <laughs> now, number seven is that you need to stop awaiting validation from others, okay? You need to stop seeking validation from others. You need to stop waiting for others to approve of what you've done or what you intend to do. You need to stop waiting for people to express admiration for something that you've done or for, for, for people to just applaud you. Because the truth is, very few people will actually express any kind of validation for various reasons. It could be that they're envious of what you've just been, been able to achieve, or it could be that they're jealous about what you intend to do. It could be that you are achieving heights that they've always wanted to achieve themselves, but they're not able to achieve those heights for some reason. And so waiting for validation from others is a very dangerous roadblock indeed that you're putting in your way and you need to get rid of that as soon as possible. And the way that you can do that is to trust in yourself and your own abilities and your own decisions. You should be able to decide on something, execute that plan and to step back and evaluate your own progress and say, yes, I did that right and I'm happy with it. Or actually, I need to do this differently next time. Now, there's some people out there who are very good with giving constructive feedback and who are also very good at admiring what you've done and telling you what you could have done better. Now, we all have people like that in our lives and those are the people that you need to keep close. But those people who will never admire what you do and will, will, will never encourage you or anything like that, you do not need validation from. And if you're waiting for validation from these people, then you will always constantly feel broken. And it's very important that you drop this habit of waiting for validation. Whether it's validation from the people you trust and who generously give it to you, or the people who will never give it to you or very rarely give it to you, just stop awaiting validation. I'm telling you, when you do this, you give yourself the power to solve. You give yourself the power to progress with the plans and the objectives that you, 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 have, you have set for yourself. And it's very important for you to be able to do this. What it means is that you're waiting for no one. Okay. Now, let me just sound a word of caution here. That is, if what you're going to do is a good thing, is the right thing, and it's not something that's going to cause problems for anyone or offend anyone, okay? If what you're doing is, is a good activity that's going to be benef beneficial to yourself and others around you, then of course, go right ahead and do it. You don't need validation, okay? Now, I'm assuming that you're a good human being and the plans that you have and the goals that you've set for yourself are not going to pose any danger for anyone around you. If that's the case, please follow through with them. Go right ahead 
and do not wait for validation. Now, validation here, I'm looking at it from two perspectives in things that you intend to do and things that you've already done. Okay, so if you're going to do something, trust in your abilities, trust in your ideas and in your decisions and follow through with them. If you need help in some way, get them in, in the rightful way. You know, if it's if it's advice, if it's training, that kind of thing, get them in the rightful way and for the from the right people who you know and can trust mean you well. OK, but if it's something that you're confident about, then go right ahead and do it. OK, and don't wait for validation. And if it's something that you've done, like I'm saying, you should be able to evaluate what you've done yourself. Sit back and be happy with yourself. OK and where you need to do things slightly differently, do that. Now, when those people around you who give you, you know, positive feedback and constructive criticism, give you their, their feedback, then of course, enjoy it, okay? But don't wait for that because it could be a very dangerous thing for you to do and you might be holding yourself back, awaiting all of this, validation from various people who might not necessarily mean you well all right let's look at the next one number six so the next habit that i believe that you should drop is trying to have an answer for everything you want to have everything planned out so well you want to know everything that's going to happen you want to understand everything so thoroughly you, you know, you want to be in total control of everything and at every time. But, you know, the truth of life is that we cannot understand everything. We cannot know what's going to happen in the future. Of course, as much as possible, we need to plan for the future. But you never know what's going to happen the next minute, the next hour, the next day. There's some things that that's just out of our control, okay? So for that reason, I believe that you should not stress yourself with trying to know everything and trying to understand everything. Now, there's some things that have happened in my life that I have thought over for so long and I, I, I cannot understand. And I have settled that I cannot ever understand some of these things because I have come to realize that not everything can be understood, okay? We're human beings and there are things that our minds will never be able to process or that we will just not have answers for. And when you go on trying to understand these things, what you do is that you just stress yourself out. What I think that you should be doing is to try and reason out what it is that's happened in the past as much as you can. And then leave the parts of it that you just cannot make sense of. It's not for you to understand. Once you are satisfied that at that particular time, you behaved in the manner that you should have done, or perhaps if you didn't, that you learn from your mistakes. And that's the key thing, that you learn whatever mistakes you should be learning from that event. That's all you can do. Don't stress yourself out trying to understand everything. You will not and it's just going to cause you anxiety and so much stress that you do not need. Similarly with the future, plan as much as possible, but don't try to control it because you cannot. None of us can predict the future. You can plan for it, but you cannot be in total control of it. And this is where faith comes in. Now, I do appreciate that your faith might be different from mine, but um, if you're a person of faith, then whatever your faith is, then it might be the kind of faith that teaches you to leave some things in, in the hands of a supreme being that is immortal, that you cannot see. My faith is Christianity. And so I believe in God and I leave the parts of life that I cannot understand and also the entire future in God's hands. Once I have planned what I can in my power as a human being. So that's what you should do, okay? Don't try to have an answer for everything. Don't try to understand everything. 
And I believe that doing this will bring you much peace in your life. Now, the next thing I believe you should drop is negative self-talk. Okay. Now, do you know that you can play back your own voice in your mind? It's, it's, you know, it's, it's very much the truth. You can speak with yourself. You can talk to yourself and you can hear yourself speak. You can hear yourself comfort yourself. You can hear yourself encourage yourself. If you've not done that, then you've not spent enough time with yourself. And that's something that I'm going to talk about in another video. But you should be so in tune with yourself that you can hear yourself speak. And once you are able to do that, you are able to, to you know, say things to yourself that will either inspire you or discourage you. And this is the key thing. You must stop saying things to yourself that hold you back and that make you doubt yourself. Okay? You might be saying things to yourself that are making you fearful of doing something that you want to do. You remember the procrastination that we spoke about earlier? You might be saying things to yourself that might be letting you procrastinate because there might be things that might be making you afraid or nervous or might be letting you believe that you're not capable to take flight, that you're not capable of executing some plan successfully. You might be saying things to yourself that might be making you feel like you're not as creative as you actually are. It could be things that you might be saying that might be making you think much less of yourself as a person than you are. I always like to say that you are fearfully and wonderfully made because that's what you are. You are unique and there's no one like you. No two people are ever the same. That's the fact of life. Even twins differ. Okay. And so the key thing here is believing in you and believing in who you are and your abilities and reminding yourself of those things every single minute, second, hour, as often as possible. You need to tell yourself things that make you feel good about yourself. And in doing so, you will build your own confidence from within, okay? You need to let go of all the things that you're telling yourself that are killing your spirit and your soul and your confidence and making you believe you're less of a person than you are. You are great, you are strong, you are amazing, you are unique, and there is no one quite like you. You are only one and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you need to be able to remind yourself of positive things every single day. What are the things that you're saying to yourself that are negative, that are making you fearful, that are making you timid? Why are you saying these things to yourself? Is it things that people have said to you in the past that you're playing back to yourself? You need to identify these things and totally banish and cancel them today. You need to pull yourself out of that space and you need to reprogram your thoughts and your mind about yourself. Begin to see yourself for the wonderful, amazing, unique, fearfully and wonderfully made human being that you are. And remind yourself of this every single day, as often as possible. Because in doing that, like I say, you are going to bring out your own strength within you and become that confident person that you should be. And in doing this, you will find much peace and let go of the stress that downplaying your own efforts and talking yourself down may be causing you in your life. Now, the fourth thing that I believe you should stop doing today to live a more peaceful and happy life is trying to please everyone. You cannot please everyone. You, you, you just cannot. I don't believe that any human being is capable of pleasing everyone all the time. If you're doing that, then there's something seriously wrong with the people that you're around. 
it's not possible to please everyone. So stop trying to do that. Stop trying to, to, to just do what you believe that is going to let others like you. It's not necessary. Not everyone is going to like you, whether you like it or not. It's just the fact of life. And it's actually a healthy thing. If everyone likes you, then there's a problem somewhere. You know, that it's, it's just not the case. So stop trying to achieve that. Stop caring what other people think all the time. Because no human being is perfect, okay? And you're just wasting your time and causing yourself so much stress trying to please people. It's okay if not everyone is pleased with you. The key thing is doing the right thing. And, and that's that, that could be subjective, yes, but to a large extent, what is right and wrong is largely objective. Many people see right and wrong in, in very much the same way, okay? So long as you're not offending anybody, long as you're not doing anything that's, that's bad for you and also the people around you, then you shouldn't worry too much about what others think and, and whether they're pleased with you or not. Go ahead and live your life. Set out your plans and follow them. Like I'm saying, long as you're not offending anyone and long as it's not the wrong plans, that's going to cause harm to others and also yourself. Because most of the time when you do anything that harms others on a large scale, you, on whatever scale actually, long as it's going to harm someone or others, you end up harming yourself also. So if it's not anything like that, if it's something that you're doing to humbly travel along your own life journey, and to you know achieve the the goals that you've set for yourself for the good of you and also those around you then you shouldn't really care you know who you're pleasing or who thinks what you know you're just wasting time stop doing that and you're just stressing yourself out because like i mentioned earlier that could also be seeking validation from others and you might actually never get it for what, whatever reason. And often the reasons you would not get validation when you should be getting them are very unhealthy. That's not got anything to do with you. It's got to do with other people. So in the same way, stop trying to please other people because usually even if what you do is pleasing, you're not going to get any admiration or any applause for it anyway. So why keep waiting for it? Or if you get it, it might not be from that many people. So just don't care. Stop caring what it is that other people are thinking about what you're going to do and stop wanting to please them. You know, if what you're doing is a good thing and is the rightful thing to do, then chances are you're going to please someone anyway. Let's take an example. It's getting to, let's say, summer and you're thinking of having an ice cream van. It's not wrong to have an ice cream van. And what's going to happen is you're going to sell your ice cream, make some children and even adults happy because who doesn't like ice cream? Many of us do, right? And if selling your ice cream is going to make others happy and also bring you some profit, then that's that, isn't it? You know, you've made some customers happy. Hopefully you'll serve them with a smile and then you get some pennies in your pocket. Everybody happy. That's good enough. It's not about pleasing anyone per se, okay? So that's one habit that you need to drop. And if you're a people pleaser, you need to find out why you're a people pleaser. You know, the psychologists will say to you that it could be something from when you were very young. If you were criticized all the time, for example, or if, you know, you were made to feel so small about yourself, for example, then it could be the reason why you want to keep pleasing people all the time. But that's something that you have to stop doing okay because all it's going to do is cause you stress that you really could do without and that you really don't need okay number three stop being so afraid of making a mistake all right stop stressing yourself out by being so afraid of making a mistake now mistakes are meant to be made if you ask me when you make a mistake there's a learning opportunity there. That's when you can learn to do something better. Okay? 
and you cannot control everything that will happen. A bit like wanting answers for everything that we spoke about earlier. Just do what you need to do and you're a human being. If you make a mistake and it was not deliberate, then it's what it is. It's a mistake. Learn the lessons that you need to learn from them and just move on. You cannot guard against mistakes that are going to happen. That's if it's a genuine mistake. Every human being makes a mistake. So don't stress yourself out trying to be perfect and say, I'll never make a mistake. Whatever you do, you're human and you will make mistakes along life's journey. That's just the fact of life. So go ahead, live your life each day as an honest, well-meaning human being. If a mistake happens, you learn the lessons. If you do need to apologize for them, you make your sincere apologies and then you carry on. That's what you do. The one thing you should not do is stressing yourself out, trying to not make a mistake. You are not perfect. You're only human. You are not capable of not making mistakes. We all make them. That is life. And like I said, when you make them, you give yourself the opportunity to learn whatever lessons that that mistake would be teaching you and then bear them in mind. That's the crucial thing for the future so that you can live your life better and also impact others better. All right. But don't stress yourself trying to not make a mistake. You are not able. You are not able. So that's another habit that I believe that you should drop. If you're always trying to be prim and proper and overcautious all the time, you're just causing yourself unnecessary stress and it's weighing you down. Okay? So stop trying to not make mistakes. That's not possible. Okay? Right. <laughs> the second thing, stop dwelling on the past. Now, I believe that the past is a wonderful thing because it presents so much that we can learn from. And that's exactly what you should do with the past. Learn from the past. Where there are good memories, of course, enjoy them. And we all have good memories, or I'd like to think that we all have good memories. But whatever has happened in your past that you would rather not have happened, you cannot go back to the past and change that. None of us can go back to the past, except in dreams. You know, you, I do dream, dream sometimes in times gone by, as that song says, right? Have you ever dreamt a dream in time, a time gone by? I, I do that sometimes. And when you wake up, it's just so, oh, I can't even describe the feeling. But um, that, that's, I believe that's the only time in which we can go back to the past, in our memories and in our dreams. But physically, we cannot go back to the past and take some instance and then say we're changing it. Can you do that? Let me know in the comments if, you, if you've done that. I would love to know about it. But we, we cannot go back to the past, okay? So what you do with the past, with things that you would rather were different, is that you either learn from them if they're things that you should be learning from or you just simply let go of them. Now, this is where forgiveness comes in. If it's an instance where someone wronged you or, or did something to you that you believe, for example, was abusive or something like that. If it's something like that, then you, you need to be able to let go of those feelings. And again, if you, if you believe that you need help for this to happen, then you might want to get that help by seeing a therapist or something like that. This is probably another topic, but don't try and, and address all your problems by yourself where you need professional help, then get that to help you to deal with that past. But in many cases, it might just be a case of letting go of, of, of that past that you rather did not happen or perhaps forgiving someone or perhaps forgiving yourself even because it might be something you did that you would have done differently if you can go back to the past. But we can't go back to the past, right? So what you do is you learn to Forgive yourself also is very important to not just forgive others, but also yourself. 
and learn whatever you should be learning and then you move on because the past belongs just there in the past if you try to dwell on that too much all that's going to do is it's going to stress you it's going to weigh you down and it's going to just cause you to to feel so broken and it's something that you can't help because it's in the past you can't go back and make it different so you need to be able to live with your past in your present okay and that's how you do it let go forgive and learn the lessons it's very important to do that because if you don't all you're doing is stressing yourself over something that you really cannot go back to change and so you must let go of the past leave it where it belongs the past all right <laughs> Now, my number one habit that I believe that you should drop today, I'm going to start that with a quote by Albert Einstein. And he said that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing it's stupid. Okay, Albert Einstein did say that everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing that it's stupid because fishes are just not built to climb trees. That's the fact of the matter. And the moral of the story here is comparison. Do not unjustly compare yourself with others. It's, it's one of the worst things that you could do to yourself because each of us is different. Each of us is uniquely built. Each of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. We each have our own talents. We each have our own mindsets. We even each have our own bodies. Not one person is the same to the next person. And importantly, we each have different beginnings. We each have different abilities. We differ in so many ways. And so, what could be success for person A would not be success for person B because we're totally different people and, and the ways in which we differ just cannot be compared. And so when you compare yourself with somebody else, you're doing yourself such injustice because like I'm saying, because you differ from that person in your abilities, in your beginnings, in the resources available to you, in your talents, in your skills, in your experiences, in your nature, the list goes on in the way in which you differ to the next person, to you. Because of that, you should not compare yourself with somebody else. Because all you do is you will stress yourself out so much when you really should not be. Because you are different to everybody else. And once you start to compare yourself, what you're doing is you're measuring yourself absolutely incorrectly. Because that measure by which you are judging yourself is the wrong one in the first place. And so, of course, you're going to feel like you're falling short when you shouldn't be because that person to whom you're comparing yourself is totally different from you. And like I'm saying, that's the wrong measure. So that's absolutely something that you must stop doing. And to know yourself for who you are, you should know what your abilities are and you should judge yourself only from where you started. If you compare yourself with somebody else, what you're doing is you're judging yourself by their journey. Okay, you're judging yourself by their journey and that's so bad for you. If that's something that you're doing, you must quit doing that immediately because the other thing that you're doing by comparing yourself with others is that you are not allowing yourself to get to know you for who you are and to get to understand you and in so doing to get to work out your own life path. It's a very, very dangerous thing to do indeed. So if that's what you're doing, you need to stop that straight away. Now, it's natural that you might, you know, look at others and think, you know, this or that, or I, I do understand 
it might be someone that you started a job with you know and then they end up at a certain space and then you are not quite there it might be that like i said that's because they have a different skill from you okay what's your skill have you taken time to work out what your skill is perhaps if you had done that you would also have been in a different place perhaps not the same place as them but in a different place also that would be at the same level that you believe that they might have moved on to or it could be in school perhaps you're on a course with someone and they get a certain mark and you didn't get that mark why did you not get that mark are you studying the wrong thing in the first place or perhaps your skills lie in a different topic within the same subject have you exploited that have you put in more effort into developing yourself in that particular area it could be so many things so the key thing here is that you discover your own self you discover your own strengths and stop comparing yourself with others it's going to do you absolutely no good at all so that's my number one message to you today. These are the 12 things that I believe that you should quit. Shall I go over them? I think that we should. Number 12, stop consuming large amounts of news, okay? Take what you need to stay abreast with world events, but don't overdo it. It will cause you stress. Number 11, stop spending time with the wrong people who might just be bringing you down in one way or other. Number 10, stop blaming others for your problems all the time. Take responsibility for your own problems and start to resolve them. Number nine, stop copying others. It's just disrespecting yourself and you're not giving the chance to your own self to unleash your own creativity and to be original in your ideas. Number eight, stop procrastinating. Stop putting things off. Identify what it is that's causing you to procrastinate and address it and start executing your goal. Number seven, stop seeking validation from others. It's just stopping you from soaring and flying. Number six, stop trying to have an answer for everything and to understand everything. Life is uncertain. Trying to do that will only cause you so much stress you don't need it. Number five, stop negative self-talk. Be kind to yourself when you hear your own voice. Make sure it's something that inspires you and not something that causes you to doubt yourself. Number four, stop trying to please everyone all the time and caring so much what others think. You, it's not possible. You'll not be able to do that. And so stop stressing yourself all the time trying to do that. Number three, stop being so afraid of making a mistake. It's going to cause you so much stress because it's going to make you overcautious and you don't need that kind of stress in your life. You're human and it's inevitable that every so often you will make a mistake. So stop being so afraid of making one and stressing yourself through doing that, okay? Number two, stop dwelling so much on the past. Leave the past where it belongs. Learn the lessons and don't let the past weigh you down. And number one, stop comparing yourself with others. You're fearfully and wonderfully made and try and believe in your own abilities. Give yourself a chance to find your own unique self rather than stressing yourself out, holding yourself back by comparing yourself with others all the time. You don't want that stress in your life. So I hope that you found these 12 tips useful today. And if you've come with me this far, I appreciate you so much and thank you for being here. Please do subscribe and come with me on this journey to find much more peaceful ways to live our lives on this earth, okay? Because I think that the key to life is being happy and helping others when we can. And so I leave you today by saying that if you're going through a tough time, remember, it will pass and leave you stronger, better, and wiser. And if you're having the time of your life, remember, be thankful always, be grateful, and also help others along the way, okay? Thank you so much once again for being here with me today. Do subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.